Chapter 30 Garrick had one advantage over me. He was a better ball player. Gil Hodges, first baseman, Brooklyn Dodgers. The next week brought a flurry of activity to Hallelujah. The stage was set up near the first baseline on the ball field. The Methodist Church became the green room where dancers, singers, and actors could change costumes during baseball innings. The Sunday school rooms buzzed with excitement and sparkled with glitter. Mama sewed their fingers off to satisfy their mamas and get it over with. Every single ball player grudgedly agreed to perform one dance together at the end of the ball game. Tights were special ordered for the special number. Flowered tights. Mary Wilson did the fittings herself. Finesse tweaked her choreography, honed her directorial skills. And House, House had his hands full. No one mentioned Clebo's accusations about Norwood Boyd. No one mentioned House's speech about Norwood Boyd. But Kid seemed to stay an extra step away from House and an eye on him with a morbid curiosity. Nevertheless, for days he stood behind Ruby like an umpire and held pitching tryouts. Wilkie couldn't see the strike zone. Arnold threw 55 footers. Evan Evans threw lollipops, wide ones. Lincoln Latham wouldn't give up his position at second base. Klebo was the only all-star other than House who could get enough pitches over the plate to qualify him as a pitcher, and Klebo was uneven. He had already hit Arnold Hidman and three pageant players. The day before the pageant, it all began to come together. Ruby covered home plate, Klebo pitched, Boone played both left field and shortstop. They would play with one down, but they would play. Throw it here, Klebo, shouted Ruby. She crouched into position at the empty plate and gave Klebo a signal. Klebo nodded, wound himself up like a pretzel, and lunged forward with a baseball. Ruby scooped Klebo's low ball and lobbed it back to him. I call for curveballs and you deliver me swan dives. I call for fastballs, you give me high and outside. You got to throw the ball over the plate or we'll be here all day. She punched her glove with her fist and crouched back into position. She wore brand new shin and knee pads and catcher's mask that Klebo clearly coveted, although he would never admit it. You give me a little practice and I'll be the best pitcher you ever saw, said Klebo. He glared in House's direction. House ignored him. Klebo had no interest in pitching. Klebo threw a ball so far inside Ruby had to scramble to catch it. She missed. You would you would have hit the batter, she yelled. I'm doing the best I can here, Klebo hollered back. It would help if you start catching. Don't heckle your own teammate, Klebo, ordered House. I ain't gonna wear no tights, was all Klebo had to say to House. He threw another high cheese. Ruby picked it out of the air and shot it back to him. Let's have a batter, she shouted. The cornerman, Evan Evans stepped into the batter's box. Ruby signaled Klebo. Klebo shook Ruby off. Frustrated, Ruby readied herself for anything. Klebo pitched a nickel curve and Evan got some pine on it and banged a little daisy cutter out toward second base. Klebo missed it, but Arnold picked it up easy and tossed the ball to Wilkie, who tagged Evan out at first. Players hooted all around, and Wilkie threw the ball back to Arnold at second who threw it to Lincoln, who was covering third, until Evan could take up his position again. Three away, called House. Good job. He flexed his left elbow. It hurt. He couldn't even clap his approval. Way to work together, he said, his voice tailing off to wistfulness. We're going to have trouble tomorrow, said Ruby to House. She caught the ball from Lincoln and threw it to Klebo. All these pageant kids are going to strike out. And every one of those red bugs is going to get a hit off Klebo. Either they'll hit off of him or he'll walk them. He can't throw a strike. Finesse and Melba were standing at the ready beside the first base line. They applauded along with all the pageant kids, including Honey and Eudora Weltley. Time for the catfish clog, Finesse chirped as Melba ushered the dancers onto the stage by first base. As a result of Dr. Dan's impassioned speech, the pageant ranks had swelled. Finesse now had almost 20 children to marshal through 10 numbers that could be slipped in between baseball innings. For the catfish clog, 12 kids in catfish whiskers, fins, and tails 
trooped onto the stage singing I'm a Little Fishy to the tune of I'm a Little Teapot. When they were done tipping themselves over and pouring themselves out into a cardboard cast iron skillet with Aurora County emblemized on the handle, the other pageant players, including Honey, clapped wildly. The catfish bowed, and Finesse cleared her throat as if she were dying of emphysema. Kids waited for her to speak or pass out. I must make a pronouncement, Mia May, she gurgled. She patted on her chest, as if she was reminding her heart to beat. As of a few minutes ago in the green room, every pageant player who had volunteered for the baseball game has resigned from the game and will work exclusively on pageant numbers. What? The world's steamrolled over house. Finesse continued. I know this will leave the All-Stars with only their original team players to play the actual ball game portion of our pageant, but it cannot be helped. House bulldozed the stage. Finesse continued to address the cl a crowd. This is in no way a negative reflection of your wonderful baseball game. No, it is rather an enlightened awakening to these thespians, true nature and their newfound devotion to the theater to la danse, to movement and life. House took the stage steps in one leap. What are you doing? Finesse leaned sideways and whispered. They're afraid of being hit by Klebo's pitching. House put on his sunglasses. I don't believe it, he whispered back. It was unbelievable. A rescue, a real rescue. What's going on? yelled Klebo from home plate. It's a renaissance of the ball-playing tradition. Finesse called out to everyone on the field. To House, she whispered, Go knock yourselves out. Then she called to Melba, Bring that clipboard over here, Melba. We've got some rearranging to do. All stars, House jumped off the stage and trotted towards the pitcher's mound. Team meeting! The catfish cloggers waddled off to the Methodist church with Melba Jane and the other pageant players. This is so disorganized. Melba was fraying around the edges. Where's my moon pies? Seven hands shot in the air. And I'm creamed corn from the garden, too. Don't forget, said Mary Ruth Hicks. Finesse watched them walk off. She stood alone on the stage. She stretched out her long brown arms, raised her face toward the wispy white clouds above her, and whispered, Carry on, next inning. The team that gathered around the pitcher's mound was the original Aurora County All-Stars, plus one new member, Ruby Lavender. We've got us a real game, said Boone. Don't I know it, said Ned. We're going to beat those red bugs, shouted Lincoln. Wilkie, Evan, and Arnold. Beat them bad. They all shouted out of habit, even though they had all knew better. Without a pitcher, they were doomed. House stared into the faces of his teammates as reality hit him in the gut. Here it was, the game he had waited for, all year, and now he couldn't play in it. Klebo stared back at House, then looked at Ruby and Wilkie. He straightened his shoulders and stood tall. I'm playing where I don't belong, he said. We can't beat those red bugs without me pitching. I'm a catcher. Ruby looked at House, who looked at Klebo, who looked at the rest of the team. We need a pitcher, said Klebo. And I'm not it. House here, he's our man. His arm's gone, said Wilkie in a voice, sounded like a soap opera doctor delivering bad news. No, it ain't, said Klebo. No, it ain't. Stop it, Klebo, said House. But the words were sweet, and House knew where Klebo was going with them. What are you talking about, asked Ned. I'm talking about Sandy Koufax, said Klebo. Koufax pitched when his whole arm was black with the bubonic plague. Gang green, said House, and it was his finger. His elbow was black with something else. See, what did I tell you? Koufax never gave up, and all he had was a little camper oil and old ace bandage and some aspirin to help him along. He had more than that, said House. But not much, said Klebo. Not much. You're always talking about how Koufax did it, House. About how great he was and how he pitched through the pain. He ruined his arm, said House. He stopped playing when he was 30. You're 12, said Klebo, and we got a game to win tomorrow. You in or you out? 
House hesitated. Come on, House, said Ned. We can't win without you, House, said Boone. Ruby took off her mitt, tucked it under her arm, and watched. Think he can do it, House? asked Arnold, with such hope in his voice that House approached another problem. I can't play with you guys looking at me like... Get off it, House, interrupted Kleba. We don't care if you're red to dead guys. You can read the all the dead guys you want as soon as the game is over. Yeah, said Evan Evans. You're sick, Klebo, said House. I am, Klebo said. I admit it. I'll admit something else, too, if you want me to. Not a soul spoke. The image of Klebo crying like a baby inside Mr. Norwood Boyd's house melted into the image of Pip in Mr. Norwood Boyd's uniform, and House shook his head. No. He had waited so long for this day to play a real game of baseball. He wanted it. He spoke to them all. Seven boys, one girl, and himself. Ruby eared her, earned her place as a catcher. Agree? Klebo grimaced. Boys nodded. Ruby's face turned the color of her hair, but she stood tall. Agree, they all said. Klebo, can you play shortstop? asked House. You know I can, but I'm a better first baseman. Wilkie, can you play shortstop? No, everyone shouted, including Wilkie. You're our shortstop, Klebo, said House. Boone, can you move back to left field? With pleasure, Boone shoved a piece of gum in his mouth. So, asked Klebo for all of them. The Aurora County All-Stars looked at House. House looked at his team. He held out his aching arm. Tape me up, 